Welcome to another webinar episode of SnapRaise Live's Leaders and Legends. We are joined with the Director of Community Development from Field Level, a fantastic recruiting resource for players and coaches. And uh, you know, as always, we're trying to add value, figure out ways to grow sport, grow activities, and help our group leaders, uh, whether that's fundraising, either remotely or in person, like we have done for six years and helped to raise over $350 million, or whether it's providing an awesome resource like field level. And so today, uh, again, like I said, we are welcome. Uh, or we, are, we are proud to welcome Jason French from field level. Jason, welcome to our episode. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Uh, the fact that you're calling me a leader or a legend in the, uh, in the title is, uh, I'll just go with it and agree with it. I like it. You know, nothing makes me sound a lot cooler than I really am. Definitely a leader and you're approaching legend status and, and we can dive into uh, some of your credentials and all that. But I, I want to give a shout out to some of the people in uh, the attendees. We've got Bill Crean all the way from Massachusetts. We've got David Tellis from the old West Texas town of El Paso. Uh, so we got people all over the country that, that want to maybe want to hear some more about uh, what the recruiting world looks like and, and what field level is doing to, to solve some of the problems right now. And so I just I want people to know who you are and, and what your background is. And so, you know, I'll let you get into that. But I mean, decades of coaching uh, football and then also experience with USA football across the entire country and then working with several sports with field level. So if you would just uh, kind of establish yourself as a subject matter expert, please. Yeah, so I've been working with field level for uh, going on three years. It's been an awesome time uh, with this company. We have a great group of people that we love what we do and it shows in the products that we make and the interaction we have with our with our community and, and also the interaction we have with each, with each other. I know uh, Corona obviously is hitting everybody differently, but I know that the entire team, we all just miss hanging out with each other and being at the office with each other because uh, we just got a great overall uh, work environment and, and community that we have within our, our field level team. But uh, along with that, uh, I've been coaching high school football, like you said, for, uh, for a long time now, over 10 years, probably closer to 12, 13. And uh, that was what I was doing and pursuing for many years uh, as a profession. Uh, but uh, recently, when I, when I had the opportunity to move over and, and take this position with field level, I jumped at it because I just I, it was giving me the opportunity to do both what I love and work with people that I can see are, are amazing people at field level and still get to coach and uh, impact young men at the same time and be a part of a sport that I love in football. So yeah, I've been doing that a long time. I've been coaching. I was talking to you earlier. Uh, before we started about uh, all the private quarterback training and the quarterback camps I've done nationwide uh, for the last 12, 13 years. Gotten to work with the best high school and college quarterbacks nationwide. Um, you know, a lot of guys have moved on to play in the NFL or won Heismans or, you know, stuff like that. So it's been fun getting to work with those guys. And, uh, and I've been coaching high school football uh, in the Los Angeles area uh, for, for a long time now as well and moved recently to San Diego and just uh, took on the head coaching position at a local school down here. So uh, this is my life. I'm not just some guy that works for a company trying to sell, uh, you know, a, a product or a or a service. Um, I'm in it every day. I'm a former uh, college football player, um, small time. I mean, not as big time as you were at Stanford or where you yeah, yeah, at, at San Diego. Uh, not as big a, a, an athlete as you were back, you know, back in your day. But um, played small college football um, and then moved on to you know, coaching and helping athletes find their opportunities to play college football as well. So I'm in this every day, not only with field level, but in my other, in my coaching life as well. So uh, excited to come and talk, talk to you and, and coaches nationwide about uh, field level and how we can help them. Well, you mentioned coronavirus and the impact that it's had in, in affecting the, the sports seasons of spring sports and the competitive years for travel teams and high school teams. And and field level has seen a massive uptick in engagement from players and coaches alike. And, and that's because people are more and more recognizing the value of what you guys bring to the table. So I guess at a very basic level, why is it that people have been so interested in field level and what problems are you finding that you're solving right now in the, the athletic landscape? Well, as we, as we've all been noticing, it's, you know, the, the NCAA, uh, I know Division Two is starting to make some changes here uh, very shortly, but uh, Division One, Division Two, Division Three, NAIA, junior college organizations around the country um, had all in-person recruiting shut down. And so that means that college coaches weren't able to get out to tournaments or schools or showcases, and then athletes weren't even able to get to a campus uh, to meet with coaches and take 
uh, school tours of that campus. So everything from recruiting went to all uh, through digital platforms and digital uh, you know, ways of communicating. And so what we do at field level is we've been doing this for 10 years, serving 11 sports of helping coaches at the high school and club and two-year school level connect nationwide from every single level of play uh, to these college coaches. And the ultimate goal is to help their athletes find these opportunities at these colleges and to find the right fit uh, for that young person. And uh, we believe that at the high school club, two-year school coach is the most valuable and most reputable resource when it comes to a young person finding opportunities. Just like you and I, JT, you know, when we want a new job, we've got a resume. Our resume has references on it. And then our, our, our hopeful employer will call our references and make sure that we're worthy enough to have that position or we're able to you know, successfully accomplish the, the, the task at hand that that position that we're trying to get it needs. And so uh, what these, these young people have, these athletes have, their reference is their coach. And these college coaches really want to learn about the prospective athletes that they're recruiting from these coaches. So during Corona, you know, we were already a, a very popular platform for all the 11 sports that we, that we work with. But because everything went to digital, we did see a huge increase in, uh, in, in you know, profile views, video views, coach to coach interaction, college coach to athlete. Uh, interaction as well so um everything all of our, our our metrics and numbers have shot through the roof and uh obviously it's not a bragging thing like it's not like we're uh you know happy that corona happened or anything like that but we were already uh on a on a big uprise the last couple years here and we just were in a position to really help our community uh during this tough time so it's been fun watching uh all the activity we've had and it, on a personal note i've had a lot of fun getting to talk to coaches every single day um, about our platform and teaching them how to use it. Uh, we've done Zoom meetings have been, you know, all the rage right now with, with programs across the country from every sport. I'm able to jump into a bunch of Zoom meetings that I'm invited to and talk about field level, answer questions to athletes and coaches. And so it's been a lot of fun getting to just really connect and serve our community. You've done a really great job answering questions like you you mentioned, and we certainly want our attendees to be able to ask questions. So you can go through the GoToWebinar control panel and submit questions for Jason to, to answer and, and certainly would love to be able to pull some of those questions that our attendees have uh, to get those addressed. But um, I guess as it relates to the evolution of field level, how have you seen recruiting evolve and grow and develop into what it is now? Where, where was it maybe 5, 10, 15 years ago and where is it at now? Like you know, get us up to speed and up to date with the latest and greatest best practices that field, field level is helping to, to maximize. Yeah. So uh, as you know, JT, with your, with your college, you know, athletics background, you know, let's say 15 years ago, you know, a college coach, whatever the sport is or whatever, whatever the case may be, whatever level they're, they're coaching at, they either have uh, a geographic location that they're responsible for recruiting or they have a position they're responsible for recruiting. And depending upon a, a university or an athletic department budget, uh, those coaches are able to get out and go look at athletes, whether it's regional or national, you know, like the major division one programs, they're able to hop on a plane and go out nationwide. Uh, maybe some schools that are that don't have as big of a budget or they're a smaller sport, uh, they recruit more locally or more regionally. And so that's what would happen. These coaches would get out and they go to their regional locations and they go to a tournament, they go to a showcase, they go to, to a a uh, club or a high school coach's office and learn about an athlete, maybe go to some practices and, and watch these athletes play, meet them in person and, and go uh, and move forward with it. What, what has happened in the last you know, 10 years though, is a lot of things have started to happen digitally. And uh, we're, there's a couple concepts out there uh, that, uh, that, that I'll go over real quick. You know, there's three main concepts that I've seen and that we've seen in the recruiting space. And one is a, um, a company will, you know, charge you a certain amount of money to basically be a sales rep for you kind of say i'll go as a sport expert i will go uh, get your information in front of coaches uh, but that that person typically doesn't have a personal relationship with the athlete uh, doesn't know the athlete doesn't you know isn't with them on a day-to-day -day basis they just kind of they're just like a sales rep and they they, they loosely know them and they just send out a lot of emails and and stuff like that the other concept is a do-it-yourself where athletes and parents will uh, pay for a subscription to a service or a team will pay for a subscription to a service where uh, they'll get like just a database filled with 
college coach information and they'll just do it themselves. They'll send out emails, templated emails, you know, plug your name in here, university, position, and just send this out to as many people as possible. Hopefully you get a bite. Uh, what we do and what I think what's great about field level is we take the old school way of recruiting and we've made it digital, we've made it updated, or we made it new age and we've made it national. And so uh, these college coaches from 15 years ago, they want to go and have a communication uh, opportunity with the high school or the club coach. They want to they want to you know get to know the coach. They want to learn about an athlete. They want to talk to that trusted resource. And so it's hard for a coach in Texas that has a small budget to fly to you know where you guys are located up in Washington and see an athlete if they're interested. But now at field level, they can connect with that with that high school or club coach all on our platform learn about an athlete, watch their film, see their grades, get more information about the athlete from the coach, and then also connect with the athlete as well. And so what we've done is just, we've made the country, we, we've expanded the, the, the recruiting reach for every college coach in the country. And we've helped coaches at the high school and club level make their athletes a national recruit. So now an athlete from the state of Washington can get opportunities and offers in the state of Texas and Florida, and the Northeast and all over the country that's going to fit them the best. Because in the end, and, and I know you're a college athlete yourself, I mean, playing college athletics is an honor. It's it, a lot of fun. We make, we meet friends for life, you know, experiences for a lifetime. Um, you know, it, it puts us on a trajectory for our entire life. Sometimes you meet your spouses and your best friends. And so it's, it's an amazing opportunity. And so we know that if we can provide a tool to give coaches this opportunity to continue to help their athletes find the right opportunity for them for their lives, it's gonna really help that athlete in the long run. So uh, that's how we've, you know, a little bit about, you know, what else is out there in the recruiting space, but really it's that, it's the collaboration, the relationship building and the networking that happens on field level that can really help athletes find these opportunities and help the coach be the hero in the process. You, you, you mentioned the coach being the hero in the process. I guess what tools specifically do you have? How do you really facilitate and foster that interaction from player to coach and from coach to coach? So uh, coaches, uh, the high school club, two-year school coaches uh, go on, and much like LinkedIn, they connect with college coaches uh, nationwide uh, from all the different levels of play, and they can go ahead and select those connections or, or create those connections how are they like, you know, if they want to connect with everybody in their local area first, great. If they want to, if they've got kids that they know uh, are division two level athletes and they know that those athletes are interested in playing in the, the Northeast, they can start connecting with division two coaches in the Northeast. Uh, we have a messaging platform for coaches to communicate on. Uh, we've got tons of coaches that have met on our platform, um, you know, techno, you know, tech wise and, and then become, you know, friends at a, at a coaching convention. And we run into, they come to our booth and they're together and they're, Two different school logos on their on their polos and like we met through field level and we're now we're gonna go get some beers um so it's it's awesome to see the network you know effect coaches are finding jobs through field level just through the connection they've made because a college coach has worked with a high school coach on field level and recruited a bunch of their athletes and they can tell that that high school or their club coach is such a high character uh, person and, and has given them high level evaluations about the athletes and really helped them find and, and select the right athletes for their program that they're like, well, this is a great person in general that I've worked with. I would love to have that person come be on our staff. So uh, that kind of stuff happens. Uh, the, the, the high school club and, and two-year school coaches are constantly sending out what we call promotions to the college coaches about their athletes saying, hey, uh, let's say I'm your coach, JT. Hey, I'm coach French. Here's my athlete, JT. Um, I think he'd be a great uh, fit for your program. And here are the reasons why both you know, on field, um, off the field, in the weight room, in the classroom, personality, you know, different care, leadership characteristics. They can talk about all that in the evaluation to college coaches. So college coaches can get that, uh, that information up front about an athlete. So lots of ways for our coaches to connect on field level and discuss potential, potential athletes. Well, I, I know people are gonna wanna to know more, and we've actually got a question from Daryl Duvall down in Coppell, Texas, who uh, who would like to have your contact information. So you know, we will rehash this at the end before we go. But you're the best way for people to contact you on this webinar if they're interested in finding out more about Field Level. Uh, yeah, uh, for me personally, contact me at jfrench at fieldlevel.com. Uh, that would be the best way to get a hold of me. 
Um, you could also go to our website and just and contact the support of email and, and, and just ask for me and then I can get in touch with you anytime. We've got a, a specific question uh, from Paul Brill, who's the head coach of Hillsboro High and the 18 and under Music City Saints. And so this will allow you maybe to talk a little bit about where things are at with the NCAA. He says, you know, uh, with the dead period extending into July, uh, do you recommend that 2021 grad year players send videos on their own or through their coaches? I mean, that seems like a, you know, a, a really important piece, right? As you're trying to figure out you've lost a year of competition, what's the best way for you to facilitate the recruitment of your athletes? Yeah, so uh, you know, back to what we do at field level, we believe that you coach, you're the most important person. Uh, you're gonna be the, the, the man in this situation that is gonna help your athletes find these opportunities. And these college coaches uh, are gonna want to learn about an athlete from you um, in, in those early stages of the recruiting process. So uh, when it comes to film, um, I recommend that your app, I mean, obviously I recommend that you get on field level, uh, coach, if you don't have an account with us already, sign up for field level for a free account, uh, add your athletes, your athletes can add their film um, onto their profile uh, for college coaches to see and then for you to then promote your athlete and get those, those athletes uh, in front of the right college coaches. So you can, you can in essence introduce them to these schools. Uh, but when it comes to film and not having it, I think college coaches around the country know this right now. So if you have game film, get it on a platform or have an ability for your coach to to get that film in front of these college coaches um if, if all you can do is get some drill film in there or something showcasing that you can can do the skills necessary to play the position of the sport you're trying to get recruited for i think that'll be helpful as well obviously game film is the most impactful uh you know jt all the coaches listening we all we've all heard the phrase film don't lie so we've got to get you got to get film on there uh, for these coaches to evaluate, but right now, if all you've got is you know some drill film or or some you doing some workout or doing some la agility ladder or whatever the heck it is you know for your sport that can kind of showcase what you can do, um, get it on there, get get it on field level, uh, get it, get it in front of these college coaches, and uh, and then once you actually have game film to show, then you send that and say, well, now that I actually have more impactful film to show you, here it is. But in the meantime, I think these college coaches are are looking at whatever they can for the moment to evaluate and and put some some what kind of value they can on an athlete. But I do recommend uh, that it's the that it's the coach that is going to be the one introducing and telling a college coach, here's my athlete. Yes, I don't have game film on them yet, but here's some drill film. Here's my personal evaluation of the athlete. So take that for what it's worth. And then once I have some game film to prove my evaluation in, in written form to, we'll get you that film next and you can do that evaluating afterwards. So you mentioned, you know, the value of, of film and obviously some great resources that coaches want to be aware of. I guess, what are some of the pitfalls to avoid or the myths that exist in recruiting, things that you've seen that, that maybe people don't know what they don't know or they go, they're not fruitful investments of time, effort or energy? Um, myths of recruiting. I, I would say, you know, this answer is probably going to go out to a lot of those coaches out there that um, that maybe aren't obsessed with their sport. It's not like their life. You know, we know, JT and I know a hundred coaches that come to our mind that we were like, these guys are just obsessed with their sport. Their life is the sport and coaching. And there's a lot of you coaches out there that are just great hearted people that are coaching your sport at your school uh, because you were asked to do it. You, you play high school soccer, uh, your school needed a soccer coach, your principal comes to you and says, will you help me out and coach soccer? Um, what I would tell you is even though soccer may not be your day in day out life or your sport might, might not be your day in day out life, you can highly impact your athletes in finding opportunities to play college sports. Like just because you don't know what to do yet or you haven't had any experience, uh, you just putting any effort at all to help guide and give some direction to those student athletes of yours that you're working with is going to be impactful. You can make a difference. And, um, and I, you know, I'm not trying to make this an infomercial for, for field level, but, you know, using field level is that, is that tool to make it easy for you to help your athletes. And my own personal story, how I found field level, I was at uh, the CEO and I, uh, of field level, Brenton Sullivan, 
uh, one, him and I have a really good friend in common and uh, I'm at, you know, I'm, I'm at like, we're out hanging out. He comes out, the CEO comes and hangs out. And, and what do guys do when we, when we meet new people? It's always like, well, what do you do for work? What do you do for work? And he told me about field level. And I was just moving into a new position as, a, as an assistant head football coach. And I had a bunch of athletes that were, I would say, division three, division two level kids. And I was spending hours and hours making spreadsheets and phone calls and emails and all this stuff trying to get an athlete an opportunity to play uh, college football. And he told me about this platform where it streamlined my entire process. And I was, I was hooked immediately. And so it took this really daunting task to try to get an athlete an opportunity to play college football and streamline it and made it so simple. I mean, as simple as clicking around on my mouse to find, uh, to find opportunities for my athletes to play college football, it worked immediately. And so the myth of it's really hard or the myth of it's not your job. A lot of coaches out there just like, look, I, I, I'm the administrator, I conduct a practice, I'm there on game days and I'm done. Um, you, I think you coaches, uh, that may be hearing that and that if that kind of hits home for you. I just want to encourage you that you guys and gals can play a massive role uh, in helping your athletes find a great landing spot in college that, again, is going to not just be a four year fix or a four year fit, but a 40 year fit and help them for the rest of their lives. So um, I, I, that's what I would answer with the, the myths. Well, you guys have, have really revolutionized the recruiting process and you've helped to bring it into the 21st century, much the same way that we've done that with fundraising. So people used to sell cookie dough and candy bars. And then now with our online platform, we're able to optimize you know, the, the process and make it more efficient. And coaches can focus on coaching and they can, you know, they don't have to waste the hours that you were wasting, you know, in trying to get your players recruited. They don't have to waste it in fundraising with us. And so we have competitors that say we do what SnapRace does. We only do it, you know, better or cheaper or whatever. And we know that those are you know, mistruths and, and not accurate. And so, uh, you know, I can go on and on about the strengths of our platform, but you are our guest and we want to make you at home. So what, what differentiates you and field level as a service uh, versus some of the other recruitment platforms uh, that are out there? We're, we are coach centered um, is the biggest differentiating factor between us and the other platforms that I I talked about earlier. Uh, we believe that that coach is the most impactful person. Uh, they know the athlete best. College coaches want to learn about a prospective student athlete from the high school club coach uh, or the two-year school coach as well. And uh, and that's where we hang our hat. Uh, we and we serve our community. We do it in a really honest way. Um, we we serve uh, you know all of our athletes, coaches. Uh, we give tons and tons of free functionality within our platform, which others don't. And so. Uh, really, the reason why coaches love us and and why we're so liked in the in the athletic community is because we do keep the coach at the center. And so um, college coaches know it, and you know, you know, you you've been in the college game for a long time. You know, like these college coaches, they got to find a way to win, and they'll use whatever tool they can get to help them. Uh, but I hear all the time that yeah, maybe uh, that college coach will use multiple tools. They do prefer us because we do keep that high school and the club coach at the center. High school and club coaches love us the most. Why? Because we make them the hero in the process. We make them the middleman, the gatekeeper, the person that's in control of the process and fully uh, knowledgeable of what's happening within that athlete's recruiting life. So, <clears throat> pardon me. So yeah, so it's, it's really about that coach-centered feel that we bring uh, to it. And, uh, and the fact that we're, that we're helping the men and women out there that are doing it for the love of the game and for the young men and women that they coach, I think is another part of it. You know, we know, we know that no one's getting rich off of coaching high school football or high school track or high school basketball, uh, but they are doing it because they love the game and the athletes. And we just provide a tool for them to help investing and, and, and instilling that love and, and, and passion for the sport and their athletes on a daily basis and, and helping them move on. And I know I was talking to, uh, I was texting with a kid uh, yesterday, a former athlete of mine, uh, who just graduated from a university that I helped him get placed uh, through field level before I was a field level employee, and now he's a now he's a, he's graduated as a as a college student and and moving into the workforce once you know their jobs open up after Corona. So it's a great tool, and and it it, it was it's just fun to be able to be a coach that has that ability to to make an impact there because every coach that I know and all the coaches out there, I'm assuming no matter what level of play it is. 
it's it's always fun to know that you've got athletes out there playing college sports. I remember two years ago, I had an athlete playing Division One, uh, a quarterback at the Division One level, Division Two level, and Division Three level, all starting on the same Saturday. And it was just it's just fun to have that, um, you know, walking around on Saturday, whether I'm watching college football or I'm going to the store, I'm going to the gym, or whatever the case may be. Man, I just it's it's such an honor to know that I got to be a part of that of those athletes. So being coach centered is where we, we hang our hat. Yeah. In talking with Kevin Hambly, the head women's volleyball coach at Stanford, he talked about how he got a recruit out of Missouri, small rural Missouri. And I think that the club might've only had one team. And so having a good coach who was communicative and involved in the process made it a lot easier to find that player because obviously you've got to canvas the entire nation. And if you're not participatory and advocating for your athletes, then then that's a deficiency like you mentioned. And so you've seen much more engagement, much more involvement, much more participation on your platform. Um, I, I guess I'm wondering now with how are people using the platform? How are you seeing coaches? Like if you could give examples specific or general, you know, a baseball season got canceled, you still have to bring in a recruiting class. You know, what what are coaches doing at the collegiate level? And, and how are high school coaches and, and team travel ball to your coaches, how are they maximizing the opportunity for their outgoing seniors and for the, the rising juniors who might not have the opportunities that they would have had otherwise had they gotten a season of competition under their belt? Right. Well, first of all, I have some beef with Coach Hamblin at Stanford because first year of my life, I filled out a women's volleyball bracket and I went to the final four this year. Bracket didn't do so good. Uh, he didn't He didn't help. His team didn't help. That, that big outside hitter didn't help. Yeah. She, he was good. Um, anyway, so uh, I know with, with, you know, using baseball as an example. So baseball gets shut down, unfortunately, in the spring. And now everything's happening online when it comes to recruiting. So college coaches on their side, they can find athletes by using our, our college search or our athlete search tool. So they're able to go into our athlete search tool. We have multiple uh, filters that they can break it down, whether it's geographic location, GPA, position, grad class, whatever the case may be. So they're able to find athletes that way. They see an athlete, watch their film, whatever film that they may have. Um, they're able to read evaluations that the coach at their high school and club has written about them so they get an idea of what that athlete is like. Look at their transcripts, look at their grades, see if they can make it in their school academically as well. And if they find that that athlete is someone that they're interested in, they'll start pursuing the athlete, whether it's going straight to the athlete or talking to their club or high school coach uh, more about them to get more information or get more film or whatever the case may be. Um, they also are getting coaches at the high school and the club level <clears throat> are sending active promotions uh, to these college coaches, letting them know, here's an athlete that I believe would be a good fit for you, and here's why. Please take a look. We can communicate even more if you'd like to. College coaches are also able to use on our platform a feature uh, that came out about, I would say about two years ago, that's just blown up. And, and I, can, I can confidently say that field level has the most recruiting needs posted in the country all online. And so that means, and again, just using baseball as an example, a college baseball coach can go into our platform and post specific recruiting needs. I need a 2020 shortstop who has a 3.3 GPA or above, uh, a, a, you know, a, a 1,200 SAT, and uh, is maybe this tall and is projected, you know, to play at this level or has these different skill attributes, um, has this personality attribute, whatever the case may be. And if you have the athlete that meets these requirements, send them to me. And so then they get sent a, a, a targeted promotion. So if I'm a baseball coach and I'm looking at these, these, these needs that are posted by college coaches, I can go, I can read and go, I have an athlete that meets that requirement. I'm going to not just send a blind promotion to a coach saying, here's an athlete that I know could fit your program if you need that position. But now I know you need that position. I know I have the athlete that fits your, fits your criteria. Let me show you who this athlete is. And now these college coaches are able to receive, you know, uh, these promotions that are based off of the targeted needs that their program needs. So uh, that's another way that these college coaches are finding it. Um, so a, a lot of a lot of college coaches have jumped on. And, and because, again, you know, we were talking earlier about budgets and, you know, high level Division One programs and they have a budget to fly around the country, uh, a, a Division One program that maybe has a big budget to fly around the country. Um, it's living by all the same rules we are right now with Corona. So we've got a lot more of the of the higher name programs that are using our platform right now because it's the best platform to go out there and connect with coaches and find athletes. And so they can't jump on a plane. They can't get in a car and get to your facility. 
And so uh, they're using our platform by leaps and bounds now. Um, I, I won't name the the uh, the, the, the competitor, um, but the competitor, uh, one of our competitors was posting on Twitter about like all the different you know profile views that athletes were getting um, on their platform, and uh, we beat them by like three times that. You know, so we're getting you know coaches looking at uh, athletes' profiles, watching their film following them, which is basically an actively putting them on their recruiting list to, con, to con, you know, keep up to date on that athlete. Uh, we're getting that by, you know, bigger numbers that we've ever had and uh, much bigger numbers than our competition that we're seeing that they're, that they're out there trying to post and, and brag about. And so it's been, it's been a lot of fun to watch that happen. And uh, because the coaches have taken the time during Corona to learn about our platform, learn about the nuances and the features and the products that we have, we're getting a lot of like, oh, wow, like a lot of aha moments are happening uh, via phone, via Zoom with these coaches that we're going to have a much stronger user base once we're out of this uh, than we ever had before. So it's been really encouraging. With all the value that you're providing to all of these people, I, I would assume that there could be a pretty exorbitant cost. The, the amount of money that someone could charge for something like this could, could be uh, certainly a substantial. Can you can you speak to the the size of your platform, how many interactions you have, and and people you've placed in scholarships, and then what the associated cost is for for people using your platform? We are close to a million members on our platform. Um, we serve eleven sports, so it's a you know so we we serve right now we serve football, men's and women's basketball, softball, baseball, men's and women's soccer, men's and women's lacrosse men's and women's volleyball. And so we've got more coming. I think we'll talk about that later. But um, within those 11 sports we serve, we have over, we have close to a million people on our platform. Uh, we've got roughly 75,000 commitments through our platform, uh, which is pretty high. And to be honest with you, uh, tons of athletes use our system. They commit and they don't ever come back. And so they don't come back and click on committed and post the school where they've committed to. So we've got 75,000 plus people that have gone through the process of after committing, putting it on uh, on their account. So I would say we've got tens of thousands more out there that have used our platform for success, but just didn't go through the process of selecting commit. And, and they, they, just, they just stopped using our platform. So, um, you know, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me about the amount of uh, video views, profile views, follows that we've had, but it's in like profile views, video views, it's in the hundreds of thousands. Uh, just in the last 90 days, uh, which has been really fun to see just our numbers, just, you know, the graphs that we have and all that stuff just skyrocketing. So uh, when it comes to cost, you're right. You, you think it's be pretty expensive. We are, for the most part, free. Um, you're able to get on and do all the things that I've talked about today uh, for free. You're able to get a profile. Let's, co let's talk coaches. College coaches are 1,000% free. They don't pay a dime. High school club, junior college coaches, you can get on. Use that the platform 100% for free. Um, do all the different you know functionalities within the platform. Um, but then where we do make our money uh, for the most part is going to be with a, a premium plan that we have that typically our athletes uh, will pay for. Uh, that plan could either be $372 for a year or $39 a month, and that is that is a start and stop whenever they'd like. There's no contracts. Um, and then we also recommend that athletes are using our platform. Uh, during their most pivotal time of their life when they're going to get recruited and when their coach is also going to be uh, actively getting them in front of college coaches as well. Uh, we don't want an athlete and their parents to spend money on our on our premium plan uh, during the, the years that it's just not going to be as impactful. We like money just like everybody else, but we care more about uh, serving our community. We care more about you having a great experience on field level, and we don't want you spending money your, your freshman year when you're not going to get recruited, and then you spent 300 bucks that year and you're like well nothing happened and field level didn't work for us uh well we want to make sure that you're using field level at the right time uh, that you're using our premium plan at the right time and you're getting the most bang for buck out of it and basically what opens up with field level premium is you're able to see detailed activity on your profile you're able to see exactly what schools are looking at your profile your film who's following you you're giving your coach the ability to have access to the entire network as opposed to just a few that they have in their pool so Let's use uh, baseball, for example. We've got close to like 15,000, 18,000 uh, coaches in our network. Um, so, uh, you know, if a, if a high school baseball coach has, let's say, 200 coaches that they're connected to, 
they'd be able to send a promotion and, and introduce an athlete to any one of those 200 schools in their connection base. But if the athlete pays for premium, they're also unlocking the ability for their coach to uh, connect with and send promotions to anybody, <clears throat> pardon me, in the baseball network. So a lot of impact comes from our premium plan, but again, you don't need it for uh, to have success on field level. It just really helps out the process. You've got to have some favorite stories because you've possibly affected so many coaches and athletes. I know for us with Snap Rays, you know, we provided a, a sled before a team in the Bay Area could pay for it. Coach Mendez, uh, who won the Jimmy V Inspiration Award, has no arms, no legs. Um, his tagline is, who says I can't? Um, and, and really, he's a, a great story. But to be able to help a program like that with a need that they have that they want before the season instead of having to fundraise for it and as they conventionally would and then eventually the sled comes and you know we're accelerating the growth and the development of that program and those players and so a story like that is particularly enriching to me i wonder what stories you have from athletes and maybe you know big names or special monumentous momentous occasions i mean you've, you've already mentioned coaches connecting and and the the pride that you're taking in player the player graduating you mentioned earlier are there other stories that stick out or truly remarkable names that are worth mentioning? Uh, the, my favorite stories are the ones of coaches that live in geographic locations that don't get college coaches coming to their campus or to their facility or coaches to remote, remote desert locations. Or I was talking to coaches that were at the southern tip of Texas, like on the Mexico, uh, Texas border or coaches in like, you know, small towns where they've got athletes that, you know, for years, they just had this idea of like, all my only option is to go to this local junior college and then I come home and I work at a local store or I work at a local business and that's my life. And uh, these coaches then come into these schools or these clubs. Um, and we also got the same kind of story from, from coaches in different parts of the world, like Puerto Rico. And they give these athletes, they use our field level platform to get their athletes introduced to college coaches all over the country and to provide those athletes these, these opportunities and broaden their horizons to things that they've never thought of in their entire life. A kid from some remote desert location never thinks they're going to get out of that desert lo location. They're going to go to the, 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 uh, you know, the junior college, maybe locally, maybe a trade school, and then they're done. They're done playing their sport. They're just going to do that in their, in their community, and they, they never have the opportunity to explore the outside world of, of America and different different uh, cultures, different experiences, different job opportunities. And so these coaches go in there and, and have this mindset like, no, no, I'm going to give my athletes opportunities <clears throat> that they've never thought of before. And so they'll use field level to get them in front of these colleges. And we hear stories all the time of a coach jumps into a, jumps into a new program, has this mentality, has the heart for these athletes. And then for the first time in the school's history, in a 30 year history of a school, they now got five athletes all playing college, you know, women's college basketball in different schools than, than have ever that a, that a kid have ever ever have gone to from that program in the past. And now all these five athletes have five new life experiences to expand their world. And and we and we've heard the same thing with coaches, like I was mentioning in Puerto Rico, getting kids from you know maybe not uh, great socioeconomic environments opportunities to play college level athletics get college. Uh, you know, uh, education experience in the States and that can just going to help their lives uh, overall. So uh, those are my favorite stories of the coaches that <clears throat> are in a location where coaches in the past just had like a mentality of like, this is all we can do. This is, this is where we live. This is just, you know, I, I'm just, you know, doing what I can with what I'm dealt uh, that these coaches use our platform to say, no, there's more out there for these athletes and I'm going to put the effort getting those athletes these opportunities so those are my favorite stories uh, when it comes to field level um you know it's a, it's it's the coach that gets on with me on the phone and they're like man i just want to tell you how awesome field level was i've used this for my athletes for the last two years in this club program and now all of my athletes were found on field level and all finding different college opportunities to play baseball or basketball or football and uh and now that coach gets to sit back and watch uh watch the, the growth of these young men and women as they grow into great, uh, great uh, young adults and then adults as they move forward in their lives. So those are my favorite stories. It, it reminds me a little bit of the recruitment of Danny Woodhead, you know, an undersized running back, and he wanted to go to Nebraska, and they thought he was too small and too slow. And so 
that was the only school that he really had his sights set on. And so, like you mentioned, guys go to local junior colleges or vocational schools that they just, for him, his world was Nebraska. And he wanted to go to Nebraska Lincoln, the Cornhuskers. That didn't work. So he ended up going to Shadron State and becoming the Harlan Hill, you know, player of the year in the division. And, and had he had known about field level and had that been available to him, he could have had a world of opportunity and maybe he'd end up going to low 1A or, or just had a, a broader spectrum and decisions that he could have made instead of just focusing on the very limited realm of what his colleges, what his coaches knew rather. So uh, completely understand that. And, and you guys are continually investing in your platform and improving your process much the same way that we are. And, and so I guess uh, you know, what, what's coming up, what's on deck, what's going to make your platform even better and separate yourself from your competitors? Uh, we've got, well, first we're going to launch some new sports here soon. Uh, I don't, I, I can't put a solid date on it, but it's coming. Uh, definitely in, in hopefully in the, uh, the year 2020, uh, we'll get, I would say five to seven sports at least launched, uh, in, in, in into our network and, and having those sports networks launch and, and getting into those, those worlds. So we're really excited about that. Uh, we've had a lot of great conversations with, with, uh, coaches in the sports that we are launching soon just to learn the culture and to learn the background of it. And, and so we are, uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, we've also got uh, some things opening up here soon where, where our athletes are going to be able to uh, post a, a public, a public link to their profiles uh, so they can get that on Twitter and Facebook and social media and whatever the case may be. So we are, I would say we're weeks away from launching that soon, which is going to be really helpful for athletes to just kind of blast themselves out to more, more people and get their, get more coaches to, to see them for high school and the club coaches to be able to get uh, those athletes uh, links and information out in different avenues um, out there in social media or email or on their team pages or whatnot. So we're, we're, uh, we're finishing up some legal stuff. We want to make sure everything is dialed in legally. Um, and so that's going to be launching soon. And we're all really excited about that. The whole team is pumped about that. We've got some video tools that we're, we're also working with right now uh, that we're going to, we're going to launch soon. That's going to make it, a lot, a lot of fun. Although watching film for all of us coaches, if you're a coach, we're all film junkies. We all love watching film. Uh, but we're going to have some tools opening up here soon on field level where it's going to make the film watching process even more fun, more easy, uh, get more, you know, be able to see more content on our platform. And so th those are some things that are opening up right now. We've got some other things up our sleeve that we're looking forward to working on and launching in the year 2020, 2021. Uh, depends on how things go. But uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're always, and we're also always looking for more feedback from our coaching community. And we have a weekly meeting uh, where we talk about the things that we hear from our coaching community. It's not like, you know, someone says something or gives us feedback or a complaint or whatever the case may be. And we just kind of throw it in some box or, or somewhere where it's never brought up to our, 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 our staff. We care a lot about what our coach community uh, tells us and, and, and gives us into their insight. So we bring all these things up to our to our team and and we continue to work on on the different things that can ultimately help serve our, our athletes and our coaches and, and our college coaches as well. So we've got coaches, booster parents, presidents, athletic directors, all sorts of different people on this webinar. What is and we've given them a ton of information, really tactical, useful stuff. What is the best thing that people on this webinar can do to help advocate for the recruitment of their athletes? What I mean, it, it sounds like if I were to, to be hearing this, get the coach on the platform, get him communicating with as many coaches as possible. Is that right? Yeah. Coaches, if you're not on field level, sign up with field level. Again, it is free. It's very easy to sign up, uh, build out your profile, add your athletes in athletes sign up for free. It's, it's, it's all free. I mean, we, we obviously, like I said before, or we do have a premium plan, but it's a very fluid process, very, very simple to figure out uh, how to build out your profiles. Coaches start connecting with college coaches nationwide and then start being the advocate for your athlete. Introduce these athletes, promote your athletes to college coaches where you believe they'd be a good fit. And ultimately, our, the, the field level staff is always here to help. Uh, if there's something that you're, you're, not, you're not quite sure on or you want some more, you have some more questions, uh, we are always here to help. We'll do a one-on-one -on -one demo with you. We'll screen share with you. We'll get on the phone with you. Uh, we'll, we'll do whatever we can to help guide you through the process so you, the coach, feels confident using our platform. So you can, again, the ultimate goal, getting these athletes as many opportunities as possible so they can pick the right place uh, for them to, you know, to help them for the rest of their lives. So uh, always happy to help. But yeah, sign up, get your kids on, connect with coaches. And, and then contact us if you have any questions. 
it's been fun for me and for our team at Snap Race to interact with you guys because I know Brenton and you and Max and Nick and so many of the guys over there at field level really just want to help. And they care about improving the game and improving the experience of the athletes and the coaches. And, and we're very much the same way. We're helping in fundraising because we want to improve the, the student experience uh, in whatever way possible, however the coach wants to facilitate that. So to have a, uh, you know, a partner in that, in that battle and, and working together with the same spirit and intention is something that's really remarkable. And so we've been happy to be able to do these webinars uh, with leaders and legends, you leader and soon to be legend perhaps, um, and so we, you know, we appreciate you joining us today and, and shining some light on it, you know, uh, and sharing your info and, and knowledge and the application of field level and how you're helping so many teams and, and clubs across the country with, you know, getting their athletes placed and connecting coaches and, and making things a little bit easier for people during the, the uncertain time of coronavirus. So uh, I guess any parting thoughts, Jason, any, anything else that you might want to leave the uh, attendees with? No, uh, just contact us. We're, we're always here to help. Uh, I I want to make sure I get that across as, as much as possible. Uh, the field level team is really here to help. And we we don't ask for anything in, in response. We're not charging you for a phone call or a screen share or our time. Uh, we truly enjoy and love being around our, our coach community, whether it's at a coach's convention or at a clinic or just on the phone, uh, doing a Zoom meeting, whatever the case may be. We're here to help, and uh, we're here, and we love hearing the the stories afterwards. Of, of you know, we teach you how to use field level, you use field level, and then we get to hear these great stories about uh, you being the coach and you being the hero and you helping your athletes find opportunities. And so, uh, yeah, that's all that's all we want to hear. We just want to hear these great stories of, of you coaches helping your athletes. So, anything we do to help that, uh, we're here to do so. Yeah, of course. And so people can find out more about you and and field level pretty simply at fieldlevel.com and then your email address is jfrench at fieldlevel.com and if people want to run a fundraiser they can go to www.snap-raise.com and certainly you can reach out to your local representative but jason i can't thank you enough for helping to, to advocate for the the students and the coaches inside of the the teams across the country that might not know about this resource or might not know about the best way to utilize it and to access it and to to help grow the game. And so what you're doing is, is great work. And, and I can't thank you enough for joining us today. My pleasure. Uh, looking forward to us talking more in the future and working with you guys. And as a football coach, I'll probably be working with uh, snap raise in general. So get some money for our program. So looking forward to, to, to working with you guys on that as well. Right on. Well, we can't wait to reciprocate the favor and, and uh, support Westview high down there in sunny San Diego, my hometown, obviously we'll be Wolverine faithful and, and cheering for you that way. And, and, uh, you know, and if, if people have any questions, definitely reach out to Jason. I've got a chance to know him through um, our conversations leading up to this webinar. Really a, a great resource and a great guy to, to answer all your questions uh, related to field level. So that'll do it. Thank you very much. We appreciate you all and, uh, and take care.